is Daniel Rucker with True Table. I wanted to jump on here and discuss with you um, just my thoughts and my viewpoints on a video that I discovered um, in my time and as I continue to expand upon my audience and my perspective, I do what I can to digest content from other curators and people who are in this space of content and creating things that you guys consume as far as you know information, historical fact, relationship structure, perspective, and all those things considered. And one of the particular channels that I listen to is called Grapevine. Um, pretty great channel, actually. Collectively, the things that they discuss on there are more geared towards uh, the black perspective. But it's good information regardless. I, I think that you know, people need to be open minded to all um, particular perspectives. Um, so when you get a chance, check it out. Now, I have discovered I think they did this video about five days ago, if I'm not mistaken, in regards to misogyny existing in hip hop. And I wanted to talk about it. And it may sound like a bit of a rant. And I, I guess I could say it is um, because of the kind of content I listen to, because of the the pulse, because of the 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 presence, because of the, the temperature that is our social climate. Now, and I'm assuming moving forward, there are a lot of things that are spewed in spaces like this and audiences like this that are welcome, fine, are up for debate as well. And the fact that it was taglined or headlined is a better word of misogyny existing in hip hop. Um, I think that they were trying to position and accomplish a space to discuss these things. Now, one thing about my particular group of people, individuals, and I'm talking about black people, African-American people, is that there is a numerous amount of issues that exist within the community. Numerous amount. Um, and a lot of these stem from, you know, slavery. A lot of these stem from uh, family dynamics. But my problem with this particular topic, this particular episode, and I have listened to several episodes that are created on this channel. And what it seems to me is that this particular channel is more female centered in, in, in providing a, a space for black women to convey their disappointment, to convey their you know, pain to convey their thoughts, to convey their viewpoints. That's fair. Now, my issue with some of the information that is being spewed to the audience is that it is very much centered in a place that is best beneficial for black women packaged in a way that is being delivered that it benefits black men. Um, I'm going to say something and I'm going to stand firm with this because this is what I believe. A woman, um, specifically in this situation, a black woman is not qualified to be able to distinguish what a black man should be doing or what that looks like. Um, one, you're, you're, you're a woman. You're, you're not a man. Now, um, in one of my videos, I had discussed the difference between a male and a man. If anyone does basic search and basic discovery on what our position in the black community is as far as males and men, you know, position. And what I mean by position, break it down from Daniel. What I mean by position is where we exist. There is less of us in active roles within our family dynamics, within our households, than are not. And a lot of times what happens is that any person walking around with male genitalia is labeled a man. Um, it's important because a lot of times what ends up happening is that with very little experience and very little 
interactions um, with women who interact more with the males than men, then the the viewpoint becomes because of my experience or because of my social circle experience is or because of, you know, my limited, you know, exposure that this interaction or these few interactions or these uh, few known interactions become the st- become the, the the standard or what would be a better word uh, I guess the set conclusion and expectation um, it is very difficult to be able to distinguish a male and a man just from face value uh, it, it requires a little bit of time it requires uh, scenarios it requires um, questioning it requires different environments it requires effort to be able to distinguish and why you know I was more so moved and motivated to talk about this particular issue because like I stated I have viewed this particular channel before and like I stated earlier the the content is overall great um it is relative um the things that I would stand firm on and the things that I would stand and if given an opportunity to even discuss in their particular form would be um, why masculinity is being attacked and why it is seemed to be such a agenda of, of the panelist um, and the creator of the show to pinpoint and, and now put a laser focus on where masculinity doesn't benefit the female population or doesn't benefit society. Um, that I would definitely firmly disagree on. I think that most of the issues that we are experiencing, uh, specifically in the black community, are because of masculinity not being present. And as it has been said, you know, a toxic masculinity and then, you know, a non-toxic masculinity. Well, I think that there has to be a conversation or conversations that are stemmed more around the perspective because the truth of the matter is is that men are very much needed. Um, The male population, the male seed, the male presence is very much needed uh, to to create a society where men are no longer of value, men are no longer prioritized is chaos plainly and the sad part is that we are now as a I won't say as a globe because I don't have that data I will say as a nation spending a lot of time creating a new narrative that is now becoming one that is desensitizing um, the, the, the position of the importance of male presence um, I have the opportunity to be in constant rooms and meetings and I've set on boards uh, creating policy, uh, creating procedures, structuring how we were going to go about carrying on the company that um, our, I was partnered with uh, working for. Uh, and I, I've been blessed to do that. Now, why is that relevant? Well, in most spaces that I've been, I've worked in, um, I've dabbled in healthcare, I've dabbled in mental health uh, for the last few years. Uh, I am in the culinary arts, but my particular field always has a component to it that is existent in these particular um, business uh, sectors. So that's relevant because in my observation, a lot of times when these Thoughts and things are coming together when these, you know, uh, formulation of policies, when these, you know, um, pillars are being built. A lot of times the conversations are lacking um, male insight. You know, I find myself in rooms with VPs and, you know, GMs and department heads. And a lot of times I'm surrounded by women. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I, I don't want 
you know, those listening to this to get it misconstrued that I'm trying to say that women are no, not as of equal value because I have stated in several videos of mine that value from a, a humanistic standpoint is equally matched. Males are not more superior than females from a state of importance. And what I mean by importance, quantifying one's life to another. Like neither one is more valuable or less valuable in my opinion, even though I could lay out some things that would probably get you to understand the disposable nature that society has placed on men with its tying into this particular, you know, video in itself. Um, but I'll leave that for another time. But what I was trying to get at is that sometimes the very thing that is needed to help balance out, bring clarity, bring some sense of um, solidarity is the perspective of a male, like the perspective of a man, um, a man that is aware a man that is focused, a man that is in his position and is in alignment will always bring quality, substance, clarity, um, protection, momentum, and progress to the situation. What has happened is that there's been a lot of circumstantial situations that have occurred that sometimes get too much attention from the media or you have or those particular episodes occur with people who have a, a large social circle. I'll give you an example. Um, the whole Chris Brown and Rihanna situation, you know, no one really knows what took place in that particular situation. What we do know is that we have two superstars that were in close proximity but were also in a relationship and it was said allegedly that he was violent he you know um physically abused this girl now this it's, it's speculative at this point and and i don't want you to lose what i'm trying to get at by using this example so i hope i can convey this correctly but because he is a male and then he is a black male at that and then he's uh, opposed to being, you know, with a, a, another a young lady who just so happens to be a superstar and just so happens to have the affection and the love of millions and millions of fans. He's a villain. And he's not a villain just because he's the first man to ever physically abuse a woman. He's a villain because there's been known men that have been from his same community that have been, you know, of similar status that have been reported or um, put in a position to where there was information that came out that they were uh, physically abusing their spouse or girlfriend or whatever it may be. And that's not to say that these things don't happen. Domestic violence happens whether you're famous or not. Domestic violence happens whether you're Chris Brown or... Robert Jones or, you know, whoever. It, it, it's, it's a natural component of toxicity in, 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 in you know, um, how would I put it, strife that exists at certain levels when certain people are together, or when certain situations arise. Um, so why, why is that relevant? It's relevant because it... I think it ties into the agenda of how now over the last few decades we have spent time and when I say we I mean the media society has spent a lot of time a lot of time I mean millions of problems maybe billions of even advertisement dollars perpetuating images perpetuating you know um this agenda that men are just bad and it's such contradiction. It's such a contradiction. It's so contrary to the contribution of men across the board. If, if men weren't present doing what they needed to do 
there wouldn't be a lot of things existing. There would be no internet. There would be no building standing. There would be no cars running. There would be a lot of things that wouldn't be the luxury that people are experiencing today. But to it, it I think and a lot of times there is always a, uh, uh, people lose, you know, sight of what the, the span of things really are. Now, to bring it back, this particular, again, this topic was masculinity existing in hip hop. And I watched this panel and I watched this show and I watched them try to, there was male, man in, there was men and women on the, on the panel, but the women were very adamant about trying to make it seem like with the lyrics and the things that are being, you know, showcased from the lyrics to the videos and how it is, uh, what, what were the words used, uh, perpetuating a negative imagery and perpetuating the lack of value when it came to women in hip hop from a masculinity perspective, uh, that was their, their argument that they were saying that it, it's not right and it's not, you know, uh, the, the, this improper, you know, the, the disrespecting our women and, you know, making it seem like they were objects or, uh, things of that nature. Now, I think one thing that was missing out of everything that was said, cause there was a lot of different perspectives. Um, uh, one guy on there, uh, forgive me. I forget his name. Uh, uh, uh forget his name. Uh, but anyway, I think his name was Carl. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was Carl. Carl, I like Carl's perspective. I'm going to tell you why I like Carl's perspective. Because Carl's perspective was what I would consider to be the most legitimate and genuine. Carl was talking about hip hop at its essence and also from the perspective that don't pick on the genre that has catapulted our people to the mainstream and make it seem like these things don't occur across the board. Like, Hip hop is the only genre who is um, vocalizing things about women that may not be so uh, politically correct, you know, for lack of a better term. And he was, in my opinion, given a very fair argument. And even in that, it was still not received because the agenda seemed to be that masculinity you know, chauvinism in, in hip hop is so prevalent and present. There was other arguments on this panel to state that, well, you have female rappers who are coming out who are exemplifying the same, if not the exact same rhetoric, and it's applauded. Like, they're building their career off of taking what was showcased as successful because even with the the lyrics and the imagery and the videos, a lot of these artists are still successful, um, thriving off of their content. And one of the arguments was also that it's not just the artists, it's the, the, the record executives, it, the record executives, it's the, the record labels, it's the, the producers, it's, it's, it's a business, it is a product. Um, one thing that I think was left out too is that no one touched on the fact that some of these artists don't necessarily live what they're saying to the decree of this is who they are. A lot of it is expression and a lot of it is entertainment. And I think that there needs to be a clear line drawn when you try to attack, you know, masculinity and make it seem like masculinity in itself needs to be you know, revamped and revisited because that's what I received from this particular post in this video. And I've seen a lot of things like this from this particular channel and other channels that are alike that they're trying to make it seem like masculinity is the problem, that men are the problem. <laughs> like we need to teach them how to be more, they don't say it, but more like us. And I'm like, no. Um, I'm going to be a man and let you know that there, more men don't need to be more like women. More men need to be more like men. 
more men need to step up and, and, and face life and take life by the horns and, and stand in their position that they were given by birthright. Um, when you have women who feel that they can now mark you as qualified or verified, you know, like you're some kind of IG account and you need verification of your manhood, it's BS. Uh, it's, it's, it's very disrespectful. It's very disturbing because it's taken on different forms. You know, I don't, and I said it earlier, I don't think women are qualified to be able to determine what men should be doing to their level of expectation in a sense that is saying, well, masculinity looks like this, but it doesn't look like this. Well, a man looks like this and this is okay, but then this part is not okay. Well, that's not your job. Uh, women need to stop sitting back and fit, taking things to where this world is yours in a sense to, to literally control. That's not your position, your job. That's no one person's position or job. We as men and women are supposed to be working together to create a better society for ourselves for our future, for the children that we're, we have or are going to have, and then the children they have, they're going to have. That's the agenda. That should be the healthy agenda and the focal point. But you got an opposing side so much. Um, and, and I feel more so from the women now because of everything that has been um, given to them as far as of lately when it comes to the feminist movement and what is the new agenda? This fairness and this equality of sorts. Uh, and most of it stems around, you know, economics. Uh, I mean, I hear things about, oh, you know, uh, a man should respect a woman's uh, ability to say no. Well, so should a woman. It's no different. <laughs> I hear men say no all the time in different aspects. But the moment a man decides to, to vocalize his Dis disappointment or disdain and then we're wrong but I'm not going to get into those little itty bitty um, lanes what I wanted to focus on is the fact that what stood out the most about this post and the things that I've seen and been collected you know over the podcast and the channels that I watch is that masculinity is truly under attack um, I think people need to wake up I think men need to wake up uh it is truly a divisive agenda. It is a dismantling of trying to get men to adhere to a new structure of society. And I agree that if there is enough data and enough evidence to state that men and the masculinity is very much you know, overly sexist or overly dis disruptive or overly, you know, destructive, then I'll rest my case. But I'm not going to sit here and take the very few people who try to sit back and make it seem like all men, all we do is be born and mess up stuff. Or all we do is bring nothing but malice and chaos to the world as a whole. That's nonsense. Men are tremendously important and men that are listening to this need to know you are tremendously important you are the key to all things that are going to be balanced all things that are going to be progressive all things that are going to be good for any woman that doesn't see that and understand that that she's sadly mistaken and um delusional in a lot of ways because it's needed more men need to rise and stand in the positions that are their positions. Policing their own neighborhoods. Um, raising their children. Uh, leading their households. Because guess what? That's our, that was given to us. Uh, God gave that to us. That's not for a woman to decide if that's okay or not okay. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop right there. Uh, like I said, it's going to sound like a little bit of a rant. I'm going to continue to bring you guys some more content and similar to this. Uh, please, you, when you get an opportunity, go ahead and hit the um, like button. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I want to continue to create 
more content that you guys want to hear and uh, it's more relevant and on par of what's happening now in, in our in our society and just continue to hope share hope and share a perspective that is uh, best beneficial um, so anyway you guys enjoy your day uh, night or whichever um, until next time this is Daniel Rucker with True Table signing out thank you very much